may welcome Lorna Mitchell. Hello. Hello, Lorna. Pleased to see you, and mm -hmm. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, very good to be here. Nice to see you too. Yes. Uh, so maybe you can start to share your screen. Let's see if the technology is on my side. Yes, yes, we had a difficult... Oh, it's working on at first try. Uh, so the stage is yours for the next around 40, 45 minutes. So we are listening to you. Thank you, Arno. Thanks very much, Arno. And thank you, everybody, for being here with me. Um, I am super excited to be representing the Open API Initiative today. Um, and... I, you know, perhaps you saw my talk yesterday where I was wearing my Vonage developer advocate hat. Um, but today I come as a messenger from the OpenAPI project um, to tell you about the new 3.1 release. It's super, super imminent. You know that soon. <laughs> it really is soon. We promise. Um, so... And I want to update you on that, tell you a bit about what to expect um, and bring some other news from around the community as well. So, um, yeah, thanks for being here, for sharing this with me. And uh, it's, it's, it's exciting times. It is. It's exciting times. OK, right. Slides. Perfect. So the quick summary, and I appreciate that digital events mean a lot of us are multitasking. So here's the headline news. I never wanted to grow up to be a news reader, but I'm gonna give this my best shot. Here are the small things that you need to know. If you're not using OpenAPI full time, the headline news might be enough, but um, if you're a bit more embedded in the open API space, then you definitely need to see the rest of the talk as well. So there is an upcoming minor release to open API. It's going to be 3.1. Um, and it is coming some sort of soon. I My guess is early January. Um, so that is pretty imminent if you think how much time uh, typically ourselves and others have out of the office over the traditional winter festive period. The important thing is that we will have proper JSON schema compatibility. So I know that there are lots and lots of open API users that also use JSON schema as a sort of sister standard within their open API documents. So this is incredibly good news for you um, and you will want to upgrade probably very soon. The other really big news is that uh, we have first class support for webhooks. And I'll talk a bit more about webhooks and callbacks, which we already had in 3.0. Um, but 3.1 has support for webhooks. So if you do have a modern two-way API, any sort of event-driven HTTP messaging, and um, this stuff will be incredibly valuable for you too. So excellent news on that as well. And um, there's a bunch of other what seem like small improvements, but that I think will make a big difference to all of us who do use open API um, and who rely on it. There's just some smooth edges getting added. I think it's, it's, it's a good time. It's a really good time. Now, I'm going to begin with the controversy of the moment, which is that when 3.0 was released, um, the open API specification was uh, going to be semantically versioned. And in the 3.1 release, it is no longer semantically versioned. So technically, um, it is not entirely to the letter backwards compatible with 3.0. Now, if you are wondering if this project is perhaps run by a bunch of irresponsible cowboys, <laughs> then bear with me, because that is more or less exactly what I said um, when I heard this news. However, having dug into it a little bit more, uh, we use semantic versioning a lot on our code projects. It's vital for backwards compatibility where the code exists and you want to be able to run it with any version of um, the library. So for dependencies, it makes sense. For standards, it, it, it is different. Every document has 
itself declares which version of OpenAPI it supports. So there's, we don't really, you know, you use matching versions of tool support and OpenAPI version. It isn't that we move the tools forward or we keep this, it's, it's not like that. Um, the spec, each API description knows what version of the spec it supports. So um, it's going to come together. Also, if you are on 3.0 and looking to upgrade to 3.1 and thinking, oh no, breaking changes. Um, the changes are pretty minor and they're pretty edge cases. This really isn't a major version release. We have some nice additions. There are a couple of things that I think we probably will have automatic tools to fix that you would need to change when you bump that open API version number in your specs, but um, it really isn't a major release. So it's a minor release. The benefits are enormous and the blame for the breaking change lies entirely with um, our commitment to supporting JSON schema in a real first class way. Um, I certainly think it's worth it. So let's talk a little bit about the JSON schema support. So I am absolutely stealing the thunder of Ben, who is going to come and give you the JSON schema um, information in the next talk in much more detail with much more useful content. Um, and I'm stealing his thunder by telling you that OpenAPI 3.1 will support JSON schema 2020-12. Um, and that's a, that's a really big move. This is a big moment for OpenAPI because Currently, it sort of has support for sort of an old version of JSON schema mostly. But if you are one of those people that uses both, and I would love to know in chat if you are, um, if you are one of those people that uses JSON schema with OpenAPI, you will know it's a little bit rough around the edges. There are some limitations. So um, please hang on and talk to Ben in the next slot as well. But I'm going to try and give you the main points of the JSON schema support in the context of how it impacts open API while I have your attention. OK, so we've got um, open API and JSON schema are now aligning their data types, which is super cool. Uh, and it means that we can more easily support one uh, one what am I trying to say? One format within the other. There we go. OpenAPI does have an additional format field that can add a little bit more context, especially around the number types. But I want you to look really closely at the last item on this list, which is that we now have a null type. So we have the types you'd expect, string, number, object, array, and Boolean. We also now have the null type. So that is new. But if you're just like thinking about how null can be a type, don't worry. Uh, because alongside this, we have the JSON schema array of types support. So JSON schema supports an array of types. Um, so a field could be this type or another type, and we declare it that way. Right. So that's valid from OpenAPI 3.1. And that means that we are switching, instead of having nullable, Instead, you're going to have an array of types, and one of those types will be null. It's just a little bit uh, more flexible and more compatible with JSON schema. So the examples keyword. Right. <laughs> OpenAPI has both example and examples. JSON schema uses examples. And uh, yeah, confused, you will be. <laughs> So let's begin by looking at the example and example keywords within a schema declaration in OpenAPI. Um, and I'm going to try and give you an overview, but there is a really excellent post on APIs you won't hate, uh, where Phil's written about all the different example fields and things to look out for. We have examples of examples with examples. It's pretty hard going for tools creators. Within the schema, in 3.1, OpenAPI 3.1, you will be able to use either the singular example, which is what we currently have, or an array of example values. And there typically is only one value in the array, but it's just a sort of syntactic change. And that brings us in line with JSON schema, which uses examples. You shouldn't declare both. If you do, examples will win. 
Um, and I, maybe one day we'll deprecate example. But right now we're just recommending that you use examples. So you don't need to change this as you do the upgrade. There's another type of examples. Remember I said that uh, the JSON schema examples keyword was different from the Open API examples keyword? Oh, this is so much fun. It, and in YAML as well. <laughs> um, there's another examples keyword comes from Open API and it it, it's a map with string keys and it's used in the media type section. So usually you're describing responses. The example didn't fit on this slide. So here it is. <laughs> I think it's a neat feature. I use this a lot. And the way that Open API encourages description fields, but also encourages examples, for me is the big strength and it's what being spec first or design first means to me beyond just generating some documentation of your code. You know, when you have the examples and real good technical writer copy in your API description, you're giving not just facts, but a whole story. This examples keyword, like I say, has the named, you can give uh, string keys, so throttled, concurrent, these are types of responses. You can see they look slightly different. Um, and it's really useful to be able to show, oh, when you get status 10, there's also a request ID. I stole this straight out of the Vonage Verify API, which is our, um, you can confirm that a phone number belongs to a user or you can do some 2FA um, login. I just seen that Arno has posted the link about the examples into the chat. Thanks. Uh, you can all obviously not read it now. Bookmark it for later after you finish listening to this a very informative session. <clears throat> so now we've finished being confused about examples and examples. How about JSON schema schemas? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> there are a couple of things that are supported in JSON schema that are now coming into Open API, which is going to be kind of a superset um, of that standard. So OpenAPI, certainly in the 3.0 version, was quite strict about which, keyword, which keywords were allowed where. And in OpenAPI 3.1, that will be a little bit relaxed. It will make us more compatible with other standards, such as JSON schema. Um, within the schema object, for example, um, JSON schema allows arbitrary keys. So now so does OpenAPI. And I've added this uh, slightly frivolous decoration key <laughs> to my example um, of a, a type with properties. And then imagine it also has a decoration key. The other thing that OpenAPI, that JSON schema allows, which is coming into OpenAPI with 3.1, is the ability to have um, the some some siblings alongside dollar ref. So for the J, to allow the JSON schema support within a schema context, you can, for example, declare um, a schema. You can see the ref field there. Reuse it in lots of different places. If in this context one field is required and in another context it isn't, I can now do that with OpenAPI 3.1 because I can put the required field alongside $ref, and in this context, it's additive. And so I think that's really valuable. Like I say, that's the headline news of the impact on open API of JSON schema. The JSON schema release, which is so super shiny that you haven't, the announcement isn't official. You're about to see the announcement in the next talk. Um, there's lots of good stuff in there. So make sure that you hang on here and watch Ben's talk next as well. OK, now let's move on to the best feature of the OpenAPI 3.1 release. Um, it, it's not good to have favorites, really. Um, but this, I am completely biased. And this is the best feature um, in the release, for sure. Um, it's purely an OpenAPI feature. So it's going to be available for everyone who uses OpenAPI. It's not particularly related to JSON schema. And if you describe any sort of incoming payload or any two-way uh, API integrations, then webhooks is going to change stuff. And I've written on this slide, webhooks built like callbacks. So I wanted to drill into that language particularly 
before we kind of get carried away and look at the detailed code examples. OpenAPI 3.0 has support for callbacks and they sit um, within a request, request response, callbacks. And I think the idea there is uh, you make an API call and perhaps it's an asynchronous response. The webhooks which are going to be added in the 3.1 release are a little bit different. They're still an incoming request, but they're not tied to an earlier outgoing request. They describe a payload that can arrive, but it's in response to another event. So it might be um, a payment, an, an incoming message, some other event. Um, when I teach webhooks, I often use the GitHub push event as an example, right, you go to the web page, you paste your URL in, and then stuff starts arriving when other people push code. And that's that's really what webhooks is. So the webhooks builds on the callbacks example. The callback's still gonna be there, no changes. Um, you can call an API, API endpoint. This example has a callback parameter. And then in the callbacks section, again, a string key in the map, and then um, an expression that refers to the parameter that we sent, and then a description of an, an endpoint. I mean, it, it's literally the same structure as path item. So that's the structure of callbacks in 3.0. In 3.1, we're getting additionally webhooks, and the bottom half of this looks exactly the same. And it, again, it's a path item. It looks like a path. We have a verb, we describe it, we describe the request, we describe the response. Webhooks is incredibly powerful, but at the same time familiar because we know how to describe paths. We did it as incoming rather than outgoing in the callbacks functionality that we already had. And the webhooks feature kind of just extends that for a more, um, a more modern reflection of how we really do APIs and other HTTP communications today. It's incredibly powerful and I'm incredibly excited. I'm sure you're incredibly excited too. So if you wanna start building your web hooks and kind of get a feel for how that is going to look, one tool that has already implemented it and there are probably others and if you know about them, please put them in chat, um, is Redoc, of course. Um, so Redoc has added the x-webhooks extension to its 3.0 report, 3.0 support. So in Redoc, I don't think this is a secret. <laughs> Here's a sneak preview <laughs> that Redoc are working on their uh, 3.1 tooling as all the tooling uh, vendors probably are. And if you describe your webhooks, but instead of webhooks, you use x-webhooks, which I've unofficially seen in a bunch of different API descriptions because we didn't have webhook support. And you, it'll render it for you as it will look when uh, when we do upgrade to 3.1. So give that a try. Webhooks is a top level element. So in comparison to 3.0, where the required fields were open API, info, and paths, and then all the others were optional. The change in 3.1 is that the path, required paths and optional components um, elements. In 3.1, only open API and info are required, but you must also have at least one of the paths, the webhooks, or the components. So if you have an API description that, um, <clears throat> like you're still gonna use paths, like always, if you have an API description that only describes incoming event related payloads or some other sort of webhook, you only need webhooks. As a side effect, you can have an open API description that only contains components. Now, I don't know about you, but where I have components that are shared between API descriptions, right, work for an API provider, we have a lot of APIs that are separate products, but they're similar intentionally. So we reuse a bunch of stuff, you know, the error definitions, for example, should always be the same. So now your open API um, 
do your open API include file, if you like, which only contains components um, is valid. You can validate it in its own right. So that's, I don't know, this is so understated. I shouldn't be excited about this, but I really am. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's talk about callbacks versus webhooks. I feel like I get this question a lot. And if you didn't know this feature is coming, like now maybe you're thinking about it for the first time. So <clears throat> the reason it's confusing that whether callback or webhook is the right way to express the thing you're thinking about. The reason that's confusing is because there are lots and lots of use cases where it could be either. When I introduced callbacks, I said, oh, they're um, often we make a subscription API call and set the URL where the push events should go to later. Um, maybe it's something that you set in one place. It might be on a configuration endpoint or a setup endpoint. And then you don't necessarily want the description of that incoming payload that relates to a particular thing to be described here not just from a documentation point of view, but also from a you know, code gen class naming point of view. You might not want it over there, you might want it over here. For example, at Vonage, we have a messages API, you can send like WhatsApp, SMS, Facebook Messenger, whatever. You send a bunch of messages. The send message API calls are, are described in the messages API description. You set the URL for the incoming messages, which by the way, look a lot like outgoing, like outgoing messages and share a lot of structure. When you set up the application, I really want send message to be described here and receive message to be described somewhere else completely. You can think of it as a callback or you can think of it as a webhook and declare it alongside the send path with the receive webhooks. So there is a choice um, by describing it as a webhook, it's more standalone. You can tag it as you would an outgoing call. And there are times when you might want to do that, whether it's technically one or the other. And I think you have that, you have that freedom. Also, as a result of the webhooks edition, we've got a change in the component section. Um, there's a new element allowed in the component section. So components is all about reusable things. Um, it's like your uh, <laughs> your grab bag of things you might need, like a toolbox with a few spare screws and whatever. It's exactly that. Um, so we're making path items available in components so they can be used and reused, whether that's in a request, in a callback, in a webhook. Um, comp reusable components is the most magical thing when you're new to open API. So really nice that we're having a little addition to that as well. Awesome. It's a tangent, but I wanna take this moment to talk to you about the Open API proposal process. Because Open API is more than just a way of throwing out YAML or JSON, right? It's not just about syntax for machines. Open API is a movement, right? We're making change here. We're improving our practices. And it's the clue is in the name. It's very open. The proposal process for adding things or changing things in Open API is open. It's calling out for involvement of the industry, and anyone can submit a proposal. How do I know? Because I wrote the, wrote the webhooks proposal. Um, I proposed this. I saw a gap, something that I couldn't do in Open API, um, that I saw other, other organizations, other people that I knew from the API community also running into the same problem. Being able to raise that as a discussion topic, first of all, as an issue, and then a bit more discussion. Um, and, you know, the API community is, we, we don't pretend to be all one big happy family, we have very tight and reasoned debate. That I mean, there was discussion of whether I was doing webhooks wrong, um, which, you know, 
I was deeply offended at the time. <laughs> but, you know, maybe it's the right question to ask and we should ask all those questions. We can't go and add everything that any of us can think of to Open API. It would be utterly unwieldy. <laughs> the proposal process was a really positive experience, although a long one. Um, writing up that formal proposal, showing examples of what I suggested, examples from where that was already happening in the wild and we were working around it. Um, putting together that, you know, the formal diff for how that should look in the spec um, and then being part of that discussion. Uh, you don't, just like open source, you don't really contribute by just throwing the code over the hedge and leaving. Uh, you need to be part of it and listen to the concerns, attend the meetings. So the meetings, Open API has open technical steering committee meetings. Not everyone has a vote, but anyone can go to the meetings. And I really recommend those, especially if you are affected by some of the changes that might come up in Open API. Um, that was a great forum for me to raise these suggestions to discuss how this change could impact the wider community and then to champion that and to keep or to oh, for me to own it and to champion it and to move it forward so those meetings are on thursdays um if you are in paris that's 1800 your time uh 5 p.m for me in the uk noon eastern time and i think 9 a.m if you're on the west coast um so that's i <clears throat> It's not really a call for you all to immediately propose changes, but I want you to know this. Open API is not a thing that some people produce and then deliver down to you. It is something that we make together. And that's a really important part of this story. OK, let's try and get back to the spec. There are so many small and wonderful improvements um, that are just, <laughs> just small but life changing. Uh, available in OpenAPI 3.1. I've tried to pick out my favorites and also show you clearly what the benefits are and how they will impact the descriptions that you already have. This is the best thing about a dot, well, any dot one release, right? This is our opportunity to straighten out what wasn't just, wasn't quite perfect the first time when we did 3.0, which is a few years ago now. Ah, now, how could $ref get better? Well, <laughs> It allows summary and description as siblings. And this is in open API, so it's everywhere. That you use dollar ref. You could within a schema, you can have summary and description as siblings. Um, if you are hacking around this in 3.0 by um, only describing the schema and then having to kind of redefine the parameter with different description or different summary every time and, and an all of. I feel you, <laughs> this is gonna make a big difference to you. I know it's, this is a bit weird and geeky and sounds a little bit niche, um, but I am personally really, really looking forward to this one. In the info section, that most overlooked of open API features, there's another upgrade. Alongside, we've always had title as a required field in info. Um, and that's really important to kind of dis describe what the description is of. <clears throat> it allowed description, but it never had summary. Um, so now summary will be there in the title, in the info section, alongside title and description. I feel I'm always asked difference between summary and description. I've wondered it myself. Uh, that some tools insist on having one and get upset if it's not there. Other tools prefer the other one. So I think the best way to summarize is, let's summarize a summary. Mm -hmm. um, the best way to describe this is to say that the summary should be short. It's really short and sweet. Um, and it'll normally be shown in list view. So we use the summary when we're displaying a list of things. It's just like a quick one liner. The description typically can be a little bit more full and more detailed. And you'll use that when you're looking at just this item rather than a list of items. Summary and description are side by side all over the Open API specification. So it's nice that they're going to be side by side in the info section as well. Also in info, we're adding um, a license identifier. So license has always had name, uh, which you need to supply, and then an optional URL to point to like some definition. 
of the license that you're using. And I think as we move more to discovering APIs by their description, by their metadata, um, being able to look for things and, and find something to work with, then the having correct and accurate license information is going to be increasingly important, just like the GitHub code search includes the ability to filter, fil filter by license. So in 3.1, new option is the identifier field. And that uses the short codes from SPDX, that's the Software Package Data Exchange. And they are um, standard character codes or like short codes for the mostly the OSI approved, the real open source licenses. So that you get like Apache, MIT, but also all of the copyleft, creative commons and all of those. It's a really exhaustive list and they each have their own unique code and then we support those. So you'll give either the URL as you always did or in 3.1, you've got the option to instead of URL to use the identifier. Brilliant. In other small quality of life improvements, we, we, we now support mutual TLS um, as a security scheme. Uh, mutual TLS is... It's not that common, but it's not that unusual either. Um, so I'm really pleased to see it here. And it's a two-way certificate exchange. So normally we do two, TLS, the server, gives a, the server gives a certificate. Now the client will give one as well. Um, so it is really, it is a good thing, TM, to see that supported here. I really, really like it. This might be my least favorite, but it definitely still has value. And that is that in 3.0, OpenAPI was quite opinionated about what sorts of requests were supposed to have bodies. This is back to telling people they're doing APIs wrong. And sometimes, yeah, we inherit things that are not the way we wish they were, but they are what they are. Um, so in 3.0, get and head and delete and those kinds of requests uh, verbs did not support request body. It was straight up not allowed. Um, turns out the real world is a bit messier than you'd think. So if um, if you have an API that you need to describe that kind of commits some of these sins, that is fine. We now support it. So that restriction has been relaxed in 3.1. That does not mean that we said it was fine for you to send request bodies with your get methods. Do not do that. Also, <clears throat> this is a funny one, but I think it's something that I won't notice a lot now we have it or when 3.1 releases, when we have it, but I've run into it a bunch of times. The responses section within a path item is now optional. Now, you do really need to add the responses to each endpoint, but when you're just sketching something out and you're just giving the paths um, and, and then maybe the verbs and starting to build up something, your validator is always going to fail hard until you've at least put the responses keyword, a status code, a bit of maybe an operation ID in there, right? So by making responses optional, your API description will validate sooner as you create it. Um, and I think it discourages that kind of lazy throwing in of something that isn't complete. Um, at least I hope it's that and I'm not going to see more, uh, a larger number of incomplete uh, API descriptions because that would make me really sad. I said already that OpenAPI is not about uh, just the JSON <laughs> or even the YAML. <laughs> I want to bring news from the community. I think sometimes we focus very much on the mechanics of the specification or we use a particular set of tools. And certainly for a long time, I really did just use OpenAPI and the tools without appreciating what a community it is and also how valuable it is for people who work actively with APIs to be involved in OpenAPI. Like I have found it valuable to me and also to be part of the discussion uh, an open standard like OpenAPI is only driven by the voices that speak up um, and that are able to be there and be part of it. And as an API provider, I feel that that's been a really two-way benefit 
um, in the last couple of years when I've been really involved with Open API. So I am kind of here as unofficial community rep today, and I think it's been really good. So um, with Open API, the news that I would like to share with you is that we have our own documentation site. So rather than just having a spec, and that's we have a few examples that are really valuable also in that repository. But we've recently engaged a tech writer. We're publishing um, our own open API documentation project, which is vendor agnostic. Um, I know that the vendors are probably here. Um, Hi, vendors. Thank you, vendors, for all your awesome documentation. But that's been all there's been um, until now. So having our own open API documentation project that aims to get people started with the spec, you know, those very first steps before they really know which tooling they need or, or start looking for that, just getting the ideas introduced, getting people on board. Of course, this is also open source. I've linked to the repository there. Um, and your attention, your feedback, your patches, your continuing evolution is, is as welcome there as it is in other parts of the project. So look out for that. I've talked a lot about involvement, and I think it's easy to just, I don't know, use a tool, write a spec, update your docs, and not realize what's happening or not realize how easy it is to keep up with what is going on, on in, in the open or what's going on in the project. At any time, you can get a good idea of what's going on in the project by just checking out the list of issues and pull requests on the GitHub repository. And I've linked the specification repository there as well. The um, issues can be anything from people asking how to do something, if they can do something, um, suggesting an update to the documentation, the pull requests come in, and those might be big new features or they might be this wording is unclear, we must improve it. Um, and that's all of that is really valuable and it's really how the specification is made. Every week, I mentioned the Thursday meetings for the tech steering committee. Uh, you can get on the mailing list, you'll get sent the Zoom link. But every week there's a meeting issue <laughs> which has the agenda in it. And anyone can comment to ask to raise an existing issue or an existing pull request for discussion in that meeting. And I would strongly advocate dropping into that when you can. Um, it is really a good way to participate. And also I feel if open API is to serve all of us in industry, then what's needed is for all of us to engage with open API and to be prepared to give our opinions in discussion or be prepared to take responsibility for updating the wording on something that we've already discussed. We sort of agreed, oh, it should say this. Somebody needs to write the words. Um, there's a lot of legwork and a lot of volunteer hours to make all of this keep on working, and I think it's working really well. Um, so I hope that you can um, kind of take this on board and look out for opportunities to just check out the list or join a meeting and see what's going on. The proposal process was relatively new when I, I think it's like, mine is like proposal two or something when I when I added the web hooks functionality. Um, and I'm not sure as I began on that process, whether either I <laughs> or the open API people who didn't know me at all, really thought that it would get all the way to the end. It really did, and I think it also really established the, pro the proposal process. There have been a few others that have gone through that process since. Um, and it's been, you know, the system works is what I need to tell you, um, is I am nobody, <laughs> and I wrote the webhooks proposal, and it will be in the 3.1 release. There's a lot of excitement in the space about webhooks, a lot of people talking to me about webhooks, asking me about it, um, telling me that they need it too. There's been a lot of uh, really good kind of, passing by support and that's I think really healthy in this project. If you have ever felt that the open API tooling wasn't quite there, I want you to go back and check again um, because the tools in the last, I don't know, 18 months, two years, have been like the evolution is incredible. Um, I ended up 
Uh, I've linked the openapi.tools page here. That's a community run site. Uh, you can add your tool with a pull request if you want, but you can go and look what there is, what versions of OpenAPI it supports, what tech stack it runs on, what functionality it has. It's an incredible directory of the tools. Um, and I ended up adding a pull request to that project um, because they're super open and happy to hear from you to add that table of contents kind of sections headings that you see at the top of the page there because I can't find anything. There's so many tools now and they're good. Everything is just a bit more enterprise ready. Uh, you don't, they're all open source. It's an open standard, but you're less likely to have to build it or build part of it yourself. So definitely check that out um, with uh, the openapi.tools site. So <clears throat> in summary, and uh, also conscious of the fact that probably people are joining to see the next talk, having nipped out for some food while I was talking. So welcome back. <laughs> um, this is the story as I see it. The open API, the specification itself is about to release the 3.1 uh, version. It's got a bunch of lovely small, quality of life improvements. And it's also got some much bigger features as well that are really important. Um, the first one is that there's proper, real, up-to-date <laughs> JSON schema support. And like I say, you're about to hear more about JSON schema. Do not get out of your seats. Ben is here. And there is, of course, the webhooks support in 3.1 that I think in terms of pure API uh, modernization and kind of industry reality, uh, webhooks is absolutely where it's at. So lots of innovation in the specification space and a 3.1 release soon. I'm saying January, um, but it's, yeah, it's ready to go. We know what's in it. Uh, you can check out uh, RC1, which is the implementers draft. And I got some links for you on the next page. There is a new docs project there's more to come on that, but it's something that we're really excited about as a community that we've worked hard on. Lots of people have given time to that. And it's something that will live um, and evolve over time and be part of our project. I just waxed lyrical about the tools. I'm just seeing so many great open API tools and I'm seeing them, you know, I think like most people, I came into open API because it's the best way to make amazing and accurate uh, document API documentation, right? But there's so many other tools here as well. Um, there are so many things you can do, and I'm seeing lots more like, oh, build an integration with us, just upload your open API specification. And I'm seeing it everywhere, API gateways, all sorts. Um, events, I'll mention the API specifications conference, which was a dedicated specifications conference, mostly open API, some async API, some other related topics. That was in September, so that content is still pretty fresh. And I have a link to the YouTube playlist on the next side. Um, and a look to the future. Um, there's open API is increasing adoption. You know that, that's why you're here but it's also the specification itself is innovating, the ecosystem is maturing, the community is growing. Um, and I really feel like this is, the future is really bright. Um, the release is coming at a great time um, and what's ahead of us will be better again. <sighs> so if you have questions, you need to start typing now while I work through the list of resources that I wanna share with you. First of all, there's the current RC of the 3.1 spec. If you wanna go and have a look, that is there. If you like to read specs and that's your thing, knock yourself out. The second link is the Open API specification releases page. That's really useful because we've got RC0 and RC1 with lovely handcrafted readable change logs. So check that out to find out just at a high level what's in there, what's new. Um, if there are things you're particularly looking for, that is a really good place to go to find out more. Uh, there's the JSON schema uh, link to the project. Uh, we, I've made a big fuss 
about JSON schema being part of OpenAPI and our commitment to supporting that standard within our own. And uh, JSON schema, uh, the project is there and Ben is on next, as I might have mentioned 17 times already. There's the new documentation project, it's a GitHub Pages site, so it renders like that. Um, the main repository for open API specification, check out the issues list, check out the pull requests list, come and uh, share your voice with us um, and check out what's going on. And finally, that really ugly YouTube link is the playlist for API specifications conference. Um, so there's a bunch of more detailed videos on a bunch of this stuff there. Uh, and I would definitely recommend you check that out. Okay, I think that's it from me. Um, so if you have questions, I do believe we have a few minutes. Yes, thank you very much, Lorna. That was really awesome, really great talk about version 3.1. And uh, we have three minutes for question. Oh, very good question from Stéphane Leblanc. In which delay the Open API tools will be updated uh, with the support of Open API 3.1? That's an interesting That's question. an enormous question, isn't it? And I think I know that the diff some of the different tools, and I don't want to name check just the vendors that I use because that would be unfair. <laughs> um, yeah. all, I know all the different vendors are working on it. If you need to adopt what's here in OpenAPI 3.1 at the earliest opportunity, I suggest you inquire with your tools provider um, as to how soon they expect to have it. Um, I would love to hear about tools that are shipping their 3.1 support and make sure that we're promoting them as we are. Not aware of any that are absolutely ready today though. So uh, yeah. Hope everyone will be hacking on that over Christmas. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, we we'll have to wait for vendors. Uh, another question: How do you see OAI evolving? In my opinion, one future is it will the will is it will will it be the meta to create product windows for non-developer audience? Yeah, I definitely see Open API as a real. Um, driver of allowing more people to do more things with more APIs without us necessarily needing to build a lot of applications in between. Um, you know, for example, I, I always think of Postman as a low code tool and you can straight up import your open API description and start making API calls without having to write the application behind it. And I'm starting to see it in more of those kind of flow based graphical programming tools as well. If they if they support an API description format, it's always open API. And I expect that to grow for sure. So yeah, great question. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And definitely uh, many people I work with personally do not like to write JSON or YAML or uh, they don't want to know anything about the spec. They just want <laughs> to design APIs. So more and more. Well, look, I love the spec and I love to write code. And sometimes the uh, the low code or no code tools are just faster. So I'll Thank always you. love both. Yeah. Uh, we are right on time to welcome Ben. But before, thank you again, Lorna. Really, really great session with many good news around the OpenAPI specification 3.1. So stay tuned for uh, the official release and stay in. Ask your vendors. If you don't ask them, they may not move to it. So really, really talk to your vendors and ask them to support 3.1 or even 3.0 for some of them. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone.